show day. This is Brandon, your teacher. Yeah. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry about that, guys. As I was saying, uh, this is Brandon Bias from ChichiCheckIt.com here with a Photoshop intermediate tutorial. Yes, I know you guys were expecting some sort of advanced tutorial today, but I'm sorry, the tutorial we were working on is a little bit too hard to do all in one day. It's going to take a lot of preparation. So if you are wanting to see that advanced tutorial, you're going to have to tune in this coming Friday. But today, what we're going to work on is a shiny button. So let's go ahead and get cracking, huh? So as soon as you have Photoshop open, go ahead and start up your new document. Like usual, I'm going to stick with a 1280 by 720 resolution, and I'm going to choose a white background for today. And once you've got the settings that you want for your own document, go ahead and hit OK. And before you do anything, make sure you have these little ruler dealios up here. And if they're not there, just hit Control R if you're on a PC or Command R on a Mac. That should be able to toggle them on and off, that little shortcut there. And over here, our background has a little lock on it, so we're just going to give it a double click and name it BG for background and hit OK. And to give this background a little bit of depth, we're just going to go to the effects icon down here and give it a gradient overlay. And the default settings are okay, but I feel like putting the opacity down to about 25%. And that looks good to me, so we'll just hit OK. And we'll close this on up right here. And as we're working throughout the rest of this tutorial, I want the button and everything I make to be based on the center of the canvas. So what we're going to do is go up to one of these rulers up here, and if you click and drag you'll see that you get this little line going from the left to the right side and if you drag towards the middle at one point or another it should snap and that should indicate that that's about the middle of the canvas so you see how it kinda of snaps right there once it snaps go ahead and let go and you'll see this bright blue line unless you change the settings in your uh, preferences over here and we're going to do the same thing over on this ruler over here. We're going to click and drag until the line snaps. And so basically what we've done is we've made two rulers that indicate the center of our canvas. And that's where we're going to make all of our uh, circles that we're going to be using for our button. So let's get this started. We're going to create a new layer. Actually, let's make that two new layers. And we're going to name the first one Stroke. And we're going to name the second layer Center. And with your Stroke layer selected, go over here to the Elliptical Marquee tool. Make sure that there is no feather over here. You have a zero pixel feather, anti-aliased, and a normal style. And what I'm going to do is click in the middle here to deselect the style that was up there. And I'm going to zoom up to the canvas size by hitting Control-0. So with your elliptical marquee tool, what you're going to want to do is click on the, the center of your two rulers. And if you hold Alt and Shift, you'll be able to make a perfect circle around the center point of your canvas. And it doesn't exactly matter what size the circle is, just make it, you know, whatever suits your fancy for however big of a button you want. And when you think it's a good size, go ahead and let go. And now you should have this perfect little circle right here. And right now we're going to go ahead and depict the color of our button. So we're going to go over to this foreground color right here and give it a click. And I feel like making my button a dark blue kind of color. So I'll hit OK. And since I have that dark blue as my foreground color, I can fill in this circle by hitting Alt Backspace. And what we're going to want to do is make another circle inside this that is a lighter blue color. So we're actually going to go over to the center layer over here and make sure that's selected. And I'm going to click on this selection right here to deselect it and we're gonna make yet another circle from the center while holding alt and shift and make it just a little bit smaller than the previous circle 
And before filling this up, we need to change this foreground color to that lighter blue that I was talking about just a second ago. And we'll hit OK, and we'll fill it up again by hitting Alt Backspace, and we'll hit Control D to deselect this time. If you're on a Mac, that command should be Command D. And so here we go, we've got a dark circle with a lighter circle in it. And the next thing we're going to want to take care of is adding a little bit of a highlight on the bottom. So let's make a new layer, and we're going to call it Main Glow. And we're just going to control click the thumbnail of the stroke layer right here, and that should load the circle as a selection. And we're going to fill this up on the main glow layer by hitting shift backspace and we're gonna use white like we did before with the background and we'll hit control D to deselect and we don't want this white to be covering up the entirety of the button so we're gonna grab our pen tool and we're just gonna make an anchor point somewhere in the bottom left hand corner and we're gonna click right here on the ruler and just kind of click and drag somewhere over here to make it bend a little bit and then click and drag uh, in the upper right hand corner and just make it however you want it to look I think right there is just about fine so just click randomly out here and then connect the dots so now you should have this really weird shape but all you really want to be concerned with is this shape right here because that's going to depict the shape of this bottom highlight so if you think that's a good shape that you want then you're good to go with the next step which is right clicking and going to make selection and have your feather radius is zero anti alias is okay obviously we have to make it a new selection because none of these can be clicked so we'll hit okay and we don't want this to be the selection we want the inverse to be the selection so we're just gonna hit control shift I and as you can see that selects everything else besides this little area right here and we're just gonna hit the backspace key or delete you know your call and that should delete the upper portion of this main glow layer right here and we'll hit control D to deselect it or command D if you're on a Mac and what we're gonna do now that we've got this little bit of a white section on the bottom of our button we're gonna go over to the elliptical marque tool and we're gonna give it a feather of about 30 pixels or so and we're gonna go to the center of our canvas and click and drag while holding alt and shift and we'll make it uh, yay big and I'm gonna hit backspace two or three times uh, three times was a little much so I'll undo that and we're also gonna make a random oval shape on the bottom right here so click and drag an oval shape about right there so that the uh, the top half of the ellipse is kind of matched up with the section that you just erased so once you've got this uh, oval that's on the bottom half of your button go ahead and hit backspace or delete once or twice preferably not three times because that will delete a little bit too much and deselect it by hitting control D and there you go we've got a little bit of glowing going on on our button but it's a little bit too intense so we're gonna go ahead and lower the opacity down to maybe 50 percent ish looks good enough to me and I want another uh, glow in the upper left hand corner so I'm going to zoom up to 100% by hitting Control one That way I get a better look at what I'm doing here. 